Atomic Cook. All right, let's make a tier list. I know some people in the comments section, they have been telling me to talk about the earlier arcs of the Boruto anime, and I've only been covering the Boruto anime from the car activation arc. I never really got the chance to give my opinion on the earlier arcs that has happened in the Boruto anime, so why not? Let's just make a tier list. So before I begin, I just want to say right now, this tier list is purely subjective. There's nothing objective about this. This is purely my opinion. If you disagree with any of these placements, that is 100% fine. Uh, if you want to make your own tier list of these arcs, I'll have this tier list in the description so you can make your own so before we begin let's just go over the tiers real quick so first we got delete from existence essentially if i put an arc in this tier this arc is trash like why the hell was it even created in the first place this arc is pretty bad i'm not gonna lie the boruto anime while there are some amazing arcs in the boruto anime there are some bad arcs in the boruto anime as well in my opinion there's some pretty trash arcs that you know why the fuck was that created in the first place that shit on my face man but next we got not for me essentially this tier speed for itself it's just not for me maybe there's one or two qualities that are good about it but i just didn't really enjoy it that much and you know it just wasn't that good next we got meh essentially it's average there's nothing really special about it there's some good qualities but there's some bad qualities about it there's nothing too bad but nothing too good about it you know it is somewhat interesting but you know i could skip it if i want to next we got decent essentially if i put an arc in this tier it's definitely enjoyable to watch it's definitely an arc that i like to watch maybe it's not on par with the top tier arcs but it's definitely enjoyable and I would watch it for the story. Next we got the great tier. There's a lot of great qualities to this arc. There's probably some memorable moments. There's a lot of good qualities for this specific arc. Maybe there's one or two things that need to be fleshed out or addressed or just something that's holding back this arc from being that top tier. Next we got top tier. Essentially if I put an arc in this tier, this arc is one of the best arcs in Boruto. I'm watching the highlights of this arc on YouTube. I'm listening to the OSTs. I'm watching the fights. I'm looking up the characters. I'm re-watching some of the episodes. That's when you know an arc is top tier when you're watching it over over and over again that's when you know something is that good especially for a top tier arc in the boruto anime so without further ado let's get straight to it first we got the academy entrance arc and i would say this is decent i feel like this is a good beginning arc of the boruto anime it got us introduced to the main cast the likes of boruto sarada uh mitsuki chocho inojin shikadai and, and the rest of the class as well not only that they expanded on the academy since at least in naruto part one they didn't really go into the academy at all it was only like one or two episodes all they had to do was graduate from doing a clone jutsu they definitely expanded a lot on it since the shinobi world has progressed so much so we got to know a lot about what they were doing in the academy much more than in part one so they definitely expanded on it well not only that we got the storyline with sumire and with nue it was pretty interesting man that battle with nue as well we got to see like kakashi use purple lightning boruto uses jogan as well this is one of the only arcs where boruto got to use his jogan a lot so it was actually pretty interesting man next we got the sarda uchiha arc aka naruto gaiden i'm gonna say this is a great arc this arc right here made me fall in love with sarada's character this arc right here man this really made sarada one of my favorite characters in Boruto. she's my favorite female in the naruto franchise and they did a great job with this arc i love the team up with og team 7 sakura versus shin um sarada unlocking a sharingan out of pure love in order to meet sasuke man it was great i guess the only thing that was holding back this arc from being in the top tier area sarada for some reason thought karin was her mom like i hated that baby mama issue like i just did not like that like like the fact that they had that plot line oh man i don't know that just pissed me off like that's the only problem i had with this arc the whole karin situation i did not like that at all man that, that was so unnecessary from kishimoto it kind of made sakura's character look really bad when it's not even true at all but besides that it was a great arc next we got the school field trip arc and i'm not gonna lie this is a average arc this arc was all right you know i do like the expansion on the hidden mist village post great ninja war 15 years later and i also did like the introduction of kagura because he represented the old bloody mist and he was also a relative to Yagura, the previous Mizukage. The one thing that I guess is holding back is the villains in this arc, especially the new Seven Deadly Swordsmen. They're basically a ripoff. They're essentially a bootleg Seven Deadly Swordsmen 2.0, and they weren't interesting. I didn't really care about that bootleg Kisame. I think his name was Shizuma. I didn't really care about him at all. And you know, there were some great fights, man. You know, Sarada versus Bhutan, her copying uh, the lightning style jutsu, Boruto using Boruto stream, Mitsuki boxing the Seven Deadly Swordsmen as well. There were some good moments man but you know the antagonist of this arc really brought it down it was really corny man i don't know the new seven deadly swordsmen they're, they're kind of trash i'm not gonna lie but you know this arc was all right it was about average next we got the graduation exams arc and you know th this was uh i would say borderline decent uh to man it's, it's like average but it's pretty good um 
I'll put this in decent for now. Um, this arc right here, I really like how they had Kakashi really honed down on the new gen because Kakashi said one thing that that needs to be reinforced with the new gen and that they're soft. Kakashi made it clear that yo, these kids are soft as hell. They have no idea what they're doing, and he really set the tone and it forced uh, these kids to work together. And it's something that has been always pushed in part one and Shippuden, especially with the bell test. It was very good, man. I really liked it. And I was also rooting for Boruto to get that bell. I thought he got it, man. I was so pissed when he didn't but you know it's kakashi at the end of the day that's the six okage right there but you know pretty enjoyable arc is decent next we got the path lit by the full moon this is tatsuya 100 this is actually a one shot this isn't really a arc but this is a one shot chapter by kishimoto this is where mitsuki unlocks sage mode for the very first time and we got Orochimaru versus Log. Even though this is a one episode arc, this episode is still one of the best episodes in Boruto, in my opinion. This is easily a top 10 episode in the Boruto anime. This episode right here, this shit is fire, bro. This, this shit is fire. That fight between Orochimaru versus Log, that shit was flames, bro. That only told me that Orochimaru still got it, man. That man was boxing using Kenjutsu. I mean, he taught Sasuke how to use Kenjutsu for three years. So it does make sense. That man was really boxing, and I loved it, man. And Mitsuki on the stage, bro, that it was crazy a top tier quote-unquote arc next we got the Genin mission arc this arc was I guess man here's the thing this is like their first mission and I didn't really care about it that much there was some good moments you know Konohamaru flexing his Rasengan for the very first time and not only that uh team seven they had like their first like I guess unison attack it was average you know it's a pretty average arc nothing too crazy next we got the Byakuya arc it's also man um I do like the relationship between Shikadai and Ryogi uh, all I gotta say is free Ryogi, man. Free my man's Ryogi because, you know, I've seen characters in Boruto commit way crazier crimes and get away with way less. And so the fact that Naruto got this man locked up, free this man, man. Like, give him a retrial or something. <laughs> I don't think the anime is gonna cover this guy again, considering that we're on manga material. They're not gonna go back to the Byakuya gang uh, fucking 150 episodes earlier. But, you know, free, free the man. <laughs> free the man. Because I did like the character. I did like his relationship with Chicken That was pretty cool, man. Next, we got the versus Momoshiki arc and what thousand percent this is top tier this is still one of the best arcs in boruto you know i still go back to this arc i still watch it in my free time it's a great arc man this right here really changed my perception on boruto as a character because in this arc we had the tuning exams where boruto was cheating using the scientific ninja tool and you know it, it kind of like clouded my judgment on boruto i didn't really like him when he did that i was like what the fuck is boruto doing and after he got caught by his dad cheating and um the entire village found out that's why i started to respect boruto as a character man because he realized that he wasn't shit he really realized that he has to get his shit together and i loved it man his character really grew on me in this arc especially after he found out that he's just a scrub and he made up for it by killing momoshiki momoshiki is a great antagonist i loved his like character especially once he got into that fused state we had naruto and sasuke versus momoshiki which is arguably the greatest fight in the naruto franchise one of the best fights of all time i still think about that fight to this day it's an amazing ass fight boruto killed momoshiki using using the parent child rasengan from Naruto, him using the Jogan, him getting the Kama Seal, Momoshiki giving Boruto the prophecy that he'll lose everything one day. Man, they really went in with this arc and, you know, I'm glad that they revamped the movie because I watched the movie first and I wasn't really that impressed because I did like the movie but I didn't really care about Momoshiki's character like that. But once he got that fused state, man, that design was cold. Ikamoto balled out that design. Definitely a, a top tier arc without a doubt. If, if you have it anywhere below this, you just hate it, man. This shit was fire. 1000%. Next Next, we got uh, the Chocho arc, and I'm gonna be real here. This is the greatest arc in the Naruto franchise. The pain arc could never. Five Kage summit who? Tuning exams who? Nah, I'm joking. <laughs> Delete from existence, bro. This shit was trash. Like, I'm sorry, man. I, like, I'm gonna say it right now. This arc was bad. Who, who thought of this idea of just uh, creating this arc right after the Momoshiki arc? You come off arguably the greatest fight in the Naruto franchise. The greatest episode. Episode 65 is an iconic episode in the Boruto anime. The fact that you came off an episode like that where everyone came back to watch that episode and you got a lot of people watching Boruto again and then you create this monstrosity what the f I did not enjoy this arc this should be deleted this arc should not exist I don't mind Cho Cho getting development because I'm all for characters getting screen time getting their own arcs but when you write an arc like this especially when you come off an arc like the Momoshiki arc this just was really unnecessary man just get it out of my face next we got the Mitsuki's disappearance arc this is a great arc man this is I feel like this is a very underrated arc considering 
considering that this is anime canon and here's the thing this arc is really long it's like 30 episodes long i really enjoyed this arc it's really good to binge it because i remember watching it for the first time i was watching it weekly this is when i caught up to boruto and you know i did i did like it for what it was you know after we watching boruto and getting up to this point and just binging it straight through this is a great arc man i love the development with mitsuki with the fabrications not only that they hinted at kara we realized that the person who made all the fabrications was an outer member of kara so they definitely built that up very well and the battles were great man sarada boruto and chocho versus kakui still a very underrated fight i think that's sarada's best fight man I, like i'm gonna be real bro she was boxing a particle style user Bro, do you understand how crazy that is? Like, my girl was going crazy against a particle-style user, a person who could just delete anyone from existence. You know, and Boruto and Chocho were pulling their weight as well. It was a great arc, man. This is very underrated. It's very underappreciated because we have a lot of arcs that get a lot of shine, but this one definitely is not talked about enough. This is a great arc, man. Next, we have the Parent-Child Day arc. This is very wholesome. I'm gonna say this is decent. It's very short. It's only three episodes long, but you got some development and you got some relationships between Himawari and Naruto. Sarada and Sasuke and Chocho and Choji and all three episodes were great man I, I just loved all the episodes my favorite episode was Sarada and Sasuke conversing that's definitely my favorite one because Sasuke he's trying to be a good dad he's trying to be there for Sarada he's trying to be a good person around her but then we get the scene of him and Sarada training together and him telling Sarada that he wants her to become Hokage man that shit hit me in the feels man next we got the Jugo arc and I'm, not, I'm gonna be real this shit's not for me I don't know man I don't really care about Jugo's character like that same thing with Kari and Sugetsu I don't really care about the Taka members. I mean, they did push some good themes like fighting for freedom, the curse marks as well. You know, there was a good fight with Konoha and Jugo. That shit was fire, but this, I don't know. It just wasn't for me. Same thing with this Team Ninja Scrolls, man. This arc, even though this is a novel adaptation, I didn't really care about Mirai's character, man. You know, I wasn't really interested in her character in the first place. And the fact that she had to fight like a bootleg Hidan, yeah, it just wasn't for me. It just wasn't. It wasn't trash like the Chocho arc, but yeah, I just don't like it, man. It just was not for me. Next, we got the Konohamaru and Riemann arc. This is easily second to worst arc in Boruto, man. I don't like this arc either, man. I just It just feels unnecessary. It could just be deleted from existence. I did not like this arc at all, man. Next, we got the One Tails mission arc, and I'm not gonna lie, this is man. Here's the thing. Urashiki, man, I don't like his character. Uh, he's one of my least favorite characters in Boruto. I just did not like him as an antagonist. He's just annoying as fuck. He's just annoying. The one thing I would say, though, is that we got some Gara, Shukaku, and Shinki screen time, which I do appreciate. I fuck with Shinki heavy. So seeing him on screen and fighting alongside Boruto, that was lit as hell, man. That was definitely, I guess, the highlight for me in this arc. I love the fight between Shinki and Boruto versus Urashiki, especially with Boruto activating his Jogun, him using the Rasengan destroying his horn. Man, that, that fight was actually pretty lit, but um, I would say that this arc was... Uh, it was questionable, man. It was questionable. Next, we got the time slip arc, and I'm gonna be real. Watching it for the first time, I enjoyed it, but after rewatching it, it just it just went down for me. Like after the first watch, I would say it's great. But after rewatching it and realizing like there's a lot of inconsistencies, Urashiki, the power scaling issues, like man, this arc was not for me, man. Like I realized like this arc is just nostalgia injected in my veins. I did not I was not feeling this arc, man. I don't know. After rewatching this arc, I was not feeling it at all, man. Like, there was some good moments, not gonna lie. Like, there was some amazing moments. Like, uh, Boruto living with Naruto in his apartment. Their conversation together. Boruto meeting Neji. Their conversation as well. Sasuke and Kid Naruto talking. Sasuke talking about his past, motivating Kid Naruto to train. Jiraiya almost finding out that Sasuke is from the future. There was some good moments, but here's the thing. Uh, unless you like pure nostalgia, it, it just wasn't for me. There was so many, like, inconsistencies with Urashiki, Sasuke was nerfed heavy. Like, I don't know the disrespect that they did to Sasuke, man. I know a lot of Boruto fans don't like this arc, man. I've seen a lot of Boruto fans tell me, like, yo, this shit's filler. Like, <laughs> and here's the thing this arc isn't trash, like, delete from existence. It just wasn't for me, man. I just, I don't like pure nostalgia. Like, sure, I like getting some nostalgia things in Boruto. That's 1000% fine. It is good when you get just an arc of just pure nostalgia. And on top of that, you get inconsistencies with the writing and the power scaling. You nerfed the old gen to praise Urashiki. They did Sasuke too dirty in that arc, man. I just couldn't. I, I couldn't, man. It was hard to watch. It definitely was hard to watch. Next, we got the Mujina Bandits arc. I would say this is decent. This is definitely a decent ass arc. I definitely did like. 
like the prison portion. I know it was pretty slow and definitely did get doled out, but it definitely paid off in the end, especially with the fight between Boruto and Shoujoji. They built up Shoujoji as well, and you know, I feel bad for my man's Kokiri because he was trying to get that freedom, even though he snitched and sang like a bird as if he was 6'9. Uh, he got destroyed, man. He got eaten by Shoujoji. Shoujoji ate his brains out and he used his corpse clone jutsu to, to disguise himself as Kokiri in order to get out of the jail. And then we got the fight between Boruto and Shoujoji with Tento helping as well. I actually do like Tento as a character. I'm hoping he does come back because he was pretty enjoyable. But, you know, we got the introduction of the Kai organization. We got Boruto using his karma seal for the very first time. Yeah, it was pretty lit. Next, we got the Kara activation arc and that shit is top tier. This is definitely, arguably, one of the best arcs in Boruto. This is how you do an anime canon arc. Even though this isn't from the manga, they have direct manga tie-ins, great battles, a training arc, some old gen moments. Man, they definitely balled out with this arc. They did so many good things, with, especially with the likes of Victor and Deepa. They expanded on Victor so well. Mugino as well, man. The, you know, Mugino, I didn't really care about his character in the manga. If you go based off the manga, Mugino is a trash character. He's, he's a, he doesn't have any purpose. He's, he just feels like a side character that has no purpose in the story same thing goes for victor so they definitely did an amazing job on expanding on the likes of those two characters right there and of course deepa man deepa isn't really the top tier character he wasn't really anything crazy but he's the first character that really pushed team seven to their limits you know he destroyed team seven and forced them to go into a training arc and get their revenge and they just barely beat the guy with the team seven high compression rasengan they balled out in this arc once you get to the mujina bennett's arc and above and beyond that this is where the boruto anime just turns up they go crazy like I don't know. I feel like the car activation arc was the most enjoyable to me because here's the thing. It wasn't from the manga, so manga readers didn't know what was going to happen. Not only that, we had low expectations. We didn't really expect the craziest shit. So when they popped off, the fandom popped off too. Like, there was some crazy episodes in this arc and the fact that we didn't know what was happening, you know, it felt like I was an anime only. So being a manga reader, we didn't know what's going to happen and the fact that they popped off like this, man, this arc was fire. This arc was flames. I love this arc. The only, I guess, criticism for this arc is that it was pretty slow there was some pacing issues in the beginning i would say when they went to the land of silence slow as hell but it definitely picked up with deepa once you had to team seven versus deepa that shit was fire that fight was heat once you get that rematch which is arguably one of the best fights in boruto there was some great moments man i loved it sorry don't like your tutu moshari gun mitsuki using sage mode yeah fire ass arc next we got the owl arc top tier as well this shit is flames i would i would put it below the momoshiki arc this arc is only 10 episodes long we got some great battles the introduction of the inners of kara we got to see kash and koji we got to see delta we got to see jigan code the subplot line of the trader for the car organization not only that there were some fire ass battles you know what i'm saying team seven versus al boruto versus al which is arguably boruto's best fight so far that fight was crazy man boruto was jumping on the drones like he was spider-man he popped off in that fight and i do want to say right now this is a very good arc the anime bodied this arc man i would say right now they did a very good job and of course kawaki versus garo which i gotta say in my opinion still the best fight in boruto i know naruto and sasuke versus jigen already came out and that's a very good fight too that's also one of the best fights in boruto but i gotta give it to kawaki versus garo simply because they animated that arc in the manga art style and that shit was fire man that is still in my opinion the best looking episode in the boruto series man that shit was so good I still watch it to this day because they popped off with Kawaki. They gave him so many expanded scenes. They showed off just how strong he is. Next, we got the Kawaki arc. This is easily the best arc in Boruto. There's so many good moments in the Boruto anime with the Kawaki arc. They popped off with this arc. Kodachi went crazy with this arc, man. He was going crazy. I don't know what he was taking, but he really got this series rolling with this arc, man. And when this came out in the manga, I was losing it. Like, I was like, holy shit. Just every chapter banger after banger after banger like he was going crazy with these fights i guess the one criticism i have for this arc is that he didn't really give a lot of depth for the kara members um he didn't really get to slow it down but there was so many heat moments with naruto versus delta at least in the manga the anime didn't go that crazy as i thought it would be but the manga definitely did a good job of that part um naruto and sasuke versus jigen the anime went crazy you already know you already saw that fight that shit was insane you're gonna get team seven versus boro which is happening right now in the anime you got the borishiki moment 
Momoshiki taking over Boruto's body, destroying Boro, using that giant Rasengan after absorbing some of Naruto's chakra, Sabrina using her Chidori, Kashin Koji versus Jigen, which I still gotta say is the best fight in Boruto. I gotta make a video on that soon. Expect that video coming soon, man, because I gotta do a breakdown on that fight because that fight was flames. That fight is literally flames. That fight was too good, man. Kashin Koji versus Jigen slash Ishiki, easily the best fight in the Boruto series, at least in my opinion. And then after that, we got Naruto, Sasuke, Boruto versus Ishiki Osusuke, which was crazy, man. That shit was insane. Naruto using Baryon mode. Fuck, man. That... <laughs> that blew up my channel. I know some of y'all are on this channel because of that video. Like, I made that Baryon mode video. It blew up. Like, bro, that Baryon mode moment. When he entered Baryon mode, I lost it. It was crazy. So many people were reading the board to manga at the same time. I'm pretty sure on Manga Plus, it got like 2 million views. It was crazy, man. Manga Plus crashed when Naruto entered Baryon mode. That shit, like, broke manga websites. The manga servers were just being destroyed. No one could get on it for like the first two hours. I remember it was was crazy luckily for me i was able to read it right away for some reason i was able to get on but i know some people had trouble trying to read the chapter man it was crazy then of course borashiki stabbing sasuke's renegon caused a lot of controversy a lot of people were pissed and then naruto losing kurama from the after effects of using baryon mode and not only that we got sasuke and kawaki versus borashiki which was a cool fight as well there was a lot of bangers in this arc i'm gonna say right now boruto fans are eating with this kawaki arc because this shit is fire they definitely did their thing with this arc this is easily the best arc in boruto this is definitely a top 10 best new gen arc in anime this shit is fire this arc is heat i cannot wait for kashin koji vs jigen because that is my favorite fight but easily the best arc in the boruto series next we got the post kawaki arc which is like code damon ida you know this is decent to me i would say man it, it's all right so far it's, it's pretty slow right now they're building up the characters of the villains right now especially with code damon and ida which is necessary because kishimoto came back and actually started giving depth to these characters something that kodachi couldn't do because he for some reason he was going really quickly with the kawaki arc he wasn't really building up the car members like how kishimoto is doing right now not only that we're getting a lot of characterization with the likes of kawaki and amato definitely building up that relationship there um it is pretty interesting but it's mess so far nothing too crazy at this moment it's all right and so yeah this is my tier list of all the arcs in the boruto anime slash manga so if you want to uh, make your own tier list of these arcs i'll make sure i have this tier list in the description below so you can make your own and yeah let me know what you think about this tier list i do a good job do you agree with some of the points if you disagree with anything please let me know in the comments don't come from my head because this is just an opinion at the end of the day nothing about this subjective nothing about this is facts this is just an opinion you know i know some people may have the chocho arc in like great or top tier and that's fine bro that's fine but for me get that shit out of my face so let me know what you think about this tier list in the comment section below so if you like this video hit that like button subscribe hit the bell as well and have a good day peace